Sub shooters, my name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to SP Reviews, where today we're going to be checking out a track from an act named DJ Nasty Pants titled How It Feels Like. And if we switch over to here, we have on the screen the album. The album Savage Funk from DJ Nasty Pants. So there's a total of 19 tracks on here. And as I understand it, the vocalist in this track is Madishu. Like they're involved with it as well, just a heads up in advance. Um, and it's gonna be, I'm looking forward to the first impression. We're gonna listen through this track from start to finish. And we're gonna hear what we think. Let's go. Oh, cool. Instantly catchy, nice oscillation and sequencing to that synth there. It's got groove for days, man. Is that a secondary synth there as well? Secondary bass synth alongside the vocals? With the kicks coming in with a bit of extra presence in the low end? Okay, that's a bit of a spicy fourth chord in that harmony there. Like, it works well within the key signature, and in regards to the seventh harmonies and those jazzy sort of uh, approaches, I, I don't t necessarily mind it. I just wasn't necessarily expecting it. But it's not like it's bu too busy or anything like that. Again, I like the fact that we also have that chord note groove on the kick, it's relentless alongside the claps and the hi-hats and everything like that. The smoothness of those keys, I think, is a sub layer with those um, interesting uh, triads we had before. Adds a bit of smoothness to it, but the side chaining is done well, the, the studio production side is good. It's nice that we've got space, color-wise here, which is the percussion and the vocals. The mastering is really tight. Like, I, it sounds like um, this track has a minimal amount of dynamic range, and I think that works in its benefit. If we have significant changes in the perceived loudness, it can kind of mess with the way you mix and master something. To, to DJ Nasty Pants's credit, I think that they've made a sensible decision here to to have that approach with the um with that well, again with that master chain and the various compressing facets. Again, the vocals are fairly minimalist, not in the sense that there's less of vocal technique, you know, the singer is fantastic, show has got great pipes, very comfortable within that vocal range, lots of little bits of ornamentation, it's like, da 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 boom, you know, that, that's a really interesting melody that we're doing on top of that bass line that we've got here, and the wow wow oscillating uh, pad in the background there. It's a smart, sensible decision there. What I mean by minimalist is that we're not doing a whole lot of overdubs or a lot of extra sort of tracking there to kind of really sort of fill it up from a vocal perspective it's almost like we're aware that we've got just as many other interesting elements of the mix and we're not feeling insecure about the accompaniment I feel like this song needs to pause at some points. The kicks are consistent the entire time, and again, I don't think that's a bad thing, like having that quarter note groove there, 
it's catchy. You can nod your head to it, but it almost feels like it's 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 made for the club almost exclusively because you know at the club you were we're using these tracks within the mixes for the benefit of a DJ. Well, we've got DJ Nasty Pants, right? So that makes sense, I suppose. It would be nice just to have a point around the halfway, or maybe just a little bit after this, where like it stops and there's space for the the drums take a break for a moment, and you're just left with the synths oscillating again or something like that. Have a big pause. Have a bit of bit of a dip in the energy levels. Hey. Like, that would have been really cool there. And again, I'm not saying this is a badly written or recorded or produced track. It's just things I can hear that would make it... Because we've got the sense of constant. There's a constant doof, doof, doof the entire time. And my brain's like, yeah, I appreciate what's happening with the vocals and the bass and the synth parts and the keys and the drums. Like, individually and for the most part together. I'm wondering if there's going to be a development. Is it going to be a new section? Is this the entirety of the track? You know what I mean? And especially if this is the first impression... When you have this kind of uh, sort of approach to composition where that one thing is just, you keep at it, even with short form tracks, it'll give the listener the initial impression that every single track is going to have that one main idea and that's going to be it. Even if you take away and add instruments. Again, I'm nodding my head to it, no doubts about that, no complaints, you know, like, again, it's a catchy track, you know, musically sound, there's nothing incorrect about it stereo-wise. Like, um, not stereo-wise, like, um, with a sense of its musicality, you know, like, it's got that groove to it, that pulse that you can easily understand, that's sort of a primal urge, right? I get it how it feels like to because this is the conclusion of my review of how it feels like a track by dj nasty pants off of their album savage funk what is this track about i think that this track is about a lady talking about how the other person makes them feel like when they're with them physically emotionally you know it's how they interact with each other wanting to lie together have that intimacy there and the results and i suppose maybe it's just imagining it or trying to communicate it in a way that people will understand i'm sure there'll be people that relate to this message they'll relate to that feeling and that's cool you know that is gonna make it inherently Again, quote-unquote relatable track that will allow people to remain interested in it. From the perspective of the vocals, again, Madishu, with her with her vocals, were sensational. No complaints whatsoever. Interesting vocal melodies individually and in sequence. And while I'm not sure if there was as much var variation of the tail ends of those concepts as I would like, I'm not entirely sure if that is by design or not. You know, again, kudos, you know, all... all if we're wanting to just have separate ideas that we know we could put one after the other for the sake of it being catchy and kind of like an earworm, then that, that, that's okay, you know, like no shade about that. Um, at the same time, part of me really wants like to have, I don't know, like the outro be a little bit bigger, even if you're not going to double track the vocals, have like a little bit of an extra tail end to it or something like that. Um, show off a bit more of your spark, your prowess, because we know that Madishu is a fantastic singer just from what we've got so far. But then maybe the idea is that we'll be left wanting more, if that makes sense. I, 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 I can appreciate why we sung like this, and it does sound authentic to what the story of the track is about. I mean, that the structure of this track and the theme behind it, I mean, the structure was like verse, chorus with a... I, 
This is what I talk about with energy levels, and this isn't me being critical of it, because I think it's totally fine if we want to make music like this. Difficult to know where the drop came in and when was a verse outside of the vocals. Like if you had removed the the the, the singing entirely, I wouldn't know where the catchy part is because there's lots of different catchy bits in other areas. Like there's minimalist parts where you take some layers away. So I suppose they're sort of meant to be break parts. I I, I it's a tricky balancing act, you know? You either have more intensity in a hook to illustrate, or you have an anti-hook, which is like pulling back quite a lot when the verse is a little bit more intense. You simply have everything the similar loudness with the compression limiting, but then you also, um, you you add a lot more instruments in that hook and, and you make sure that the other verses are wildly different in regards to their, their phrasing. I just, I think without the vocals, we wouldn't have been able to tell. We were, we were supposed to really get into it or not. I don't know if that makes sense. The instrumentation, again, really competent. Great performance there, the drums are nice and catchy and punchy, you know, they keep the song rolling along, you know, great sense of pace there. The the basses, there's a little bit of automation and the flashiness there, the ba -ba 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 -ba. you know, I have no issue with that whatsoever, I think that's a smart choice to do that, because if you just have roll with the root notes, it's kind of boring, isn't it? Why not add a little bit of um, 16th note funk in there? I, I read somewhere that like this is sort of reminiscent of like 70s era kind of funk music intertwined with electronic music and house and that kind of stuff and um you know with contemporary production techniques and i, I think that's an, an eloquent way of approaching it again savage funk i i've got no issues with the musicality of it the pads key parts aside from like i'm still not i'm still on the side on that fourth chord of where the uh, electric keyboard comes in um but but aside from that it's fine like development wise of the main motif and theme we add instruments as we go along at a steady pace and we don't rush it too much so so that's fine and it's not like we have any issues with the actual like harmonies or melodies or any grooves or anything like that the, the looping parts were an interesting choice there but i think it works well if we're working with the dj music and and it kind of it's, it's kind of like what happens when you have um actual music and like sort of between transitions and stuff like that i suppose in the typical set which is cool it's a nice way of building it i suppose i'm not quite sure the uh, production of recording mixing and mastering was lovely it was it was lovely you know it sounded contemporary professional EQing, stir panning effects processing chain on different instruments was great um everything was nicely glued together and sitting well in the mix the production the post of it was was some of the strongest one of the strongest parts of this conclusion i think one of the strongest parts of the track it sounds it's it's ready for release so kudos in that absolutely you know you can really screw up a track with too much limiting compression even with like edm kind of music but at the same time, I think we managed to avoid that here. We managed to avoid that, kept it sounding fresh. While everything was a similar loudness, it wasn't kind of breathing too heavily. You didn't have too much inflection with those high chains and anything like that. So it's cool, you know, because effectively this is my review of this track by DJ Nasty Pants, how it feels like. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go and show DJ Nasty Pants some love via the various social medias and uh, their uh, Spotify page and stay cool and stay safe. And please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. As either help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world and I will catch you in the next review. Spider hands out.